what constitutes the reconstructive uh, curriculum. Uh, in the reconstructive uh, constructivist curriculum, it was not enough for the students to just analyze, interpret, and evaluate social problem. They should, or they had to be committed to the issue, discuss, and encouraged to take action to bring about constructive change. See, so once again, in a traditional classroom, we leave the real world outside. And what the reconstructivists are talking about is to bring the class to the world or either bring the world to the class. There should be a connectivity between the real world and what happens in the classroom. For example, if I was to teach maths, I could ask you a simple question of percentage and ask you if I was to go, uh, if there was, what is 30% of $60? I mean, it's a simple hygiene question. Nobody will be offended. But the sad part is, there is no connectivity with the real world. But if I was to bring in a social issue, if I was to produce food that could only feed 30% of my population, then how many people will go, hung go hungry to bed tonight? See, suddenly the same mathematical question has a social dimension. It has a dimension to encourage students to see the world for what it is and to bring about change. So reconstructivists are generally targeting about bringing social dimension to content within the students, uh, uh, students, uh, what's the thing? students class within the classroom. The curriculum is based on social and economical issues as well as social service. The curriculum should engage students in a critical analysis of local, national, and international community. Examples of issues of poverty, environmental degradation, unemployment, crime, war, political oppression, hunger, and etc. See, I had an uh, uh, interesting discussion uh, with an architecture lecturer recently. They were talking about how students were going about doing assignments, and one of the assignments was, was to design uh, uh, some kind of landscape, uh, I mean, a building. And what many of the students did was they came up with these beautiful grand master designs of, um, of sports complex and, and shopping malls and, and entertainment outlets and so on and so forth. Now, these are great, but what about issues that the society is uh, struggling? For example, uh, in today's situation, housing has gone out of control. The pricing prices of affordable housing has gone out of control. Uh, if many of you all who are a young lecturer or a teacher, I assume that if you are living on your salary, you will be out of reach of acquiring your own home. So as an architect lecturer, I may want to reconsider my assignments. I may want to give more emphasis on high density housing. How can I, how, because high density uh, housing is obviously uh, a necessary condition in urban dwelling. How do large amount of people can live within a small space and live comfortably in a meaningful way? So see, the same architecture concept uh, from a reconstructivist point of view, the knowledge should be created within a social environment to bring solution to. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that building new sports complex and shopping malls do not bring solutions to our daily social lives. But the idea is, uh, students should have a broader perspective, a broader opportunity to interpret uh, the skills that they are learning to serve society in, in a different, in a, a whole range of solutions and problems. Now, there are many injustices in society and inequalities in terms of race, gender, social economic status. Schools are obligated to educate children towards a uh, resolution of this injustice and students should not be afraid to examine controversial issues. Students should learn to come to consensus on issues and so group work uh, was encouraged or is encouraged. Now the question here is uh, many issues in Malaysia, in the Malaysian high school, Malaysian schools, uh, we would prefer to keep out the problem. And what reconstructivists are arguing is no, the problem should be brought in. Since you are creating future citizens, the citizens should be able to participate and learn to participate in meaningful dialogues with each other. Only then, when they go out to the real world, they are able to participate in dialogues in a meaningful way.
Now, the other point is curriculum should be constantly changed to meet the changes in society. Students be aware of global issues and interdependencies between nations. Enhancing mutual understanding and global cooperation should be the focus of the curriculum. Uh, many times we have allowed technology to penetrate in our classroom. But with technology in our classrooms, we have not changed what we deliver and how we deliver. Maybe it's time where we allow technology to, to become the leveraging point where students communicate with students elsewhere. Do you really have to teach the whole lesson? If let's say you are covering geography and you, and you need to cover something in, uh, in Japan, would it not possible then for your students to actually have links with students in Japan and have some kind of collaborative work where they truly participate? Um, there are many websites and opportunities for you to organize this and there is and, and finally I guess the technology is here to really make this happen but whatever said and done it's the enhancing mutual understanding and global cooperation we are a member of this global community we could be very proud of who we are but it, who we are shouldn't limit of how we interact with the others and that should be uh, highlighted in the curriculum Teachers are considered to be prime agents of social change, culture renewal and interna internationalization. They are encouraged to challenge outdated structures and re-trust the task of bringing about new social order, which may be utopian in nature. See, teachers <coughs> have to, from a, from a reconstructive perspective, teachers are cornerstones of society. They are empowered to bring about change. So a, a lame teacher may say, well, my knowledge is dead. I'm teaching um, civics or I'm teaching Malaysian studies or I'm teaching a subject that has no meaning. You know, if I was to teach medicine or, or law, then my students will be very excited because they can make more money by me and I'll be well respected. From a reconstructive perspective, this is not true. Every subject, if needs to be taught in a, if it's taught in a meaningful way, it can bring about change. And teachers should see themselves as agent of change. You use your content to bring awareness to society's needs. It's not the other way around. Society's needs don't meet into your content because sometimes you could be teaching physics. And, 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 and by, by just looking at physics, you don't see the social needs. But however, if you can use the social needs to explain physics, for example, if you're teaching uh, thermodynamics, then you talk about the nuclear plant in, in Japan, northern Japan recently that went bonkers, I guess, to understand how the concepts of nuclear thermodynamics work hand in hand with nat nature, na uh, with real natural disasters. So that way you bring a symbiotic relationship with your content and bring meaning to the content through a social environment, social situation. In general, the curriculum emphasizes on social sciences such as history, political science, economics, sociology, religion, ethics, uh, poetry and philosophy rather than sciences. Well, it, it may be true that many of these uh, social sciences subjects have a natural lending to, to, uh, from a re uh, to reconstructivism, three reconstructivism. However, I believe it's not exclusively the uh, science have Science, by by nature of the subject, is about society. I mean, science doesn't exist outside society. I mean, why would science or maths or anything exist outside society? They could be theoretically conceived in a in a in an individual's mind, but the functionality of maths and science is to be embedded in society. So I don't see this so uh, in a very dichotomous view. But however. Uh, many literatures do argue that the social side sciences tend to naturally blend into uh, reconstructive perspective as opposed to the natural sciences. Now, let's wrap this up. There are four philosophies. They vary in terms of some giving prominence to the content and some giving prominence to the learner. Uh, so you have to be fully aware of these four philosophies. Now, there is no one purist in, 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 in terms of coming to philosophy. I myself am a student of philosophy, and when I go through this, I, I get excited about every one of them. 
there are issues. I, I find weaknesses in every one of them, but I also find strength. So I guess we are basically a combination of all four, but we may have preferences in, in any one of them. Now, I hope that uh, I have done a reasonable job in expressing the four uh, pillars of educational philosophy, and I will cover psychology next.